Now, now that we have talked about a lot of the um, the mic settings and mic checks, mic check the details, we'll do that in another video. But um, we've talked about the purpose of mixing and, and how things work out during a live show. You may think that, wow, this is actually a lot of work and a lot of attention that I have to pay uh, to the mixers here, to the to the faders, how and when am I gonna, you know, read my script and figure out when mics need to be muted and unmuted and do all this manually and still pay attention to what's going on here creatively with the mix, with the faders, and yeah, I think you know you're completely right. It would be way out of hand and out of um, out of most people's ability to handle this kind of thing if you had to mute and unmute everything manually over here. So therefore, the way I set things up is I use the uh, scenes and cues in the X32 uh, board um, to set all the settings automatically. So in order to access this, this section, you hit the view button here, and that brings up the, uh, the presets over here in this on the screen okay so you can see here in the at the top it always starts out with a mute all because you know every show starts with everyone all the, everyone has their microphones on uh, on them but they all muted they all turned off okay so that's always my first cue is mute all and then it actually just kind of starts you know in this case it starts with a prologue all right, so that means as soon as they're ready to sing, so the intro music plays, the prologue music st starts playing, and uh, they're coming on the stage, music plays, now you know they're ready to sing. You hit simply go over here, and you see it, it switches to the next scene. Now, uh, the golden one is the one that is currently selected. And then the selector is the one that has the yellow frame around it that jumped forward to the next queue. And that means the next queue is now ready to be activated and will be active the next time you hit the go button. So every time you hit the go button over here, um, this jumps to the next queue and sets up your, your board for the next scene. And you can see here for the prologue, we have quite a few microphones unmuted, you know, almost, almost all of them except here uh, Larkin, Queen, and Winnie. All right, so all of them are unmuted, and that's for the prologue. And so now, instead of, you know, worrying about hitting, you know, 10, 11 mute buttons uh, to get everyone unmuted, you just hit one go button, and there there you go. Nothing is nothing else to worry about. Now you can actually focus on getting your faders right and getting your mix right. Okay, and then next, you know, so usually what I do is I name this in a way where I don't even need to look at the script anymore. Um, you know, once I know it, once I've practiced and rehearsed with the, uh, with the cast, I know the, uh, the action well enough that uh, if I name the cue list properly here, I already know this next cue has to be activated when the queen enters. So when I see the queen enter, I just hit the go button over here you see over here the queen is uh channel three plop it'll just unmute the queen okay and it doesn't matter if the action is simple like just unmuting one channel over there or if it's complex like setting up the entire you're know, redoing the entire scene so let's see what happens here in scene one right so scene one is the next one let's see what happens for scene one i'm gonna hit go right now Bam. So that's a pretty big change uh, of the configuration here. A bunch of mute buttons um, came on, so a bunch of additional channels were muted. Maybe something got unmuted that was muted before. I don't even know, and I don't have to know. I never ever have to look that up in, this, in the script again. As long as I know that for scene one, I just hit the go button again, and bam, the entire console gets um, configured, and then I can actually go in here and, and keep mixing. So then you go on, you go through this whole thing, you know, one scene at a time. And I want, want to show you something cool here that you can do even as an exception. Let me see where that is. Um, let's 
So actually, I'm going to hold the camera here because I want to show you the cool thing that happens here. In one scene, for one particular song, we actually reconfigured the DCA group. So this is kind of an advanced strategy, but it's really cool that, you know, knowing that you can actually do that. Hold on a second here. Let me just step through. I don't want to miss it. And I don't know off the top of my head which one it is. I'm just stepping through all the scenes, hitting go, 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 next, next, next. And, you know, the mute groups here, the, the mutes are flashing differently and, and everything is gonna is getting switched over every time I hit go. Okay, here is the one. This is the one. You see how um, this group here changed to Lucille and Rovina. And it was before, it was, you know, this second group of three that I that I showed you earlier, and then uh, Rubina. So in this, in this song, this is um, Happily Ever After, okay? In this song, it's actually a quartet. It's a quartet between Winnie, Larkin, Lucille, and Rubina. You can see over here, those are the four channels that are unmuted. It's the Winnie, Larkin, Lucille, and Rubina. So these four channels are the only ones that are unmuted and we've reconfigured the dca groups for this song so that winnie larkin is already in this channel we didn't change the naming scheme here but it's the only one in this in this group right because the other ones are muted anyway so larkin is here lucille is here Rina is here so it means for this quartet you have now all control over each individual microphone that's open and on stage with the four group faders and then for the next scene, I'm going to hit go again. And you see, bam, those groups are reconfigured again and are switching over again to the normal configuration that we use for the rest of the show. So this is also really cool where, you know, for this particular song, you need a little bit more detail work here with the, with the faders where it would be um, less convenient or actually impossible to mix it as well when these two guys here Lucille and Rubina are together because they're in the ensemble group together so you don't you don't have um, you know separate control over them but because you're you can reconfigure the DCA groups you have separate control and that's a really cool thing uh, to do and to think about okay so that's all there is to it this is a relatively complicated setup um, you know, configuring the, the cues here is slightly more complicated in this uh, system than you, you might wish for, but it's definitely worth learning it and um, just, you know, figuring it out. And it's a like one-time setup with maybe a few tweaks as you go through and through the script and through the rehearsals, you figure out what you need to change, if anything. Uh, that you can't just figure out from the script itself. And, you know, it takes a couple of hours to set up a, a show like this, but it saves you tons and tons of, um, well, attention that you have to not pay to, you know, muting the, the, the mutes and, and unmuting the channels manually. And it's it just frees up all of your creativity and all your attention uh, to actually do the mix. And so that's why I kind of insist that anyone who wants to mix this here under my <laughs> influence sphere uh, learns it this way and you know I'm I'm here to provide support to set this up and help you so that you can you know rest assured that it'll all be perfectly set up uh, once you have to mix the show but you'll see once you use this once I usually don't have to do much selling on this point uh, because anyone who mixes here is you and hasn't used this the system before always says oh my goodness it's so much easier <laughs>